Christmas University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Tonight sees two more alumni teams compete for a place in the semi-finals of this short seasonal tournament. With no trophy, prize or even post-match celebration on offer, one can only assume that they're motivated by a profound love and gratitude for the institutions that nurtured them. Or perhaps just a barely sublimated desire to show off. <laughs> now, playing tonight on behalf of the University of Bristol is a former barrister, a former entertainment correspondent. She's now an anchor for ITV News, who's covered the Grenfell Tower fire and the London Bridge terror attacks. And for the current affairs series On Assignment, has reported in-depth on abortion law in Poland and Ibiza post-COVID. Next to her is an autism advocate and scientist with a PhD in biochemistry, whose debut book, Explaining Humans, won the 2020 Royal Society Science Book Prize. In it, she recalls asking as a child if she could have an instruction manual for humans, which led her to a career in science shaped by her neurodivergent perspective. Their captain is a Sony Gold Award-winning broadcaster who's presented Five Lives Drive and Radio 4's Saturday Live before moving to the Times Radio in 2020. Her television work includes five years as a reporter for Tonight and co-hosting ITV's live coverage of the 2014 Scottish independence referendum. Their final member is a playwright whose work typically explores queer culture, history and politics. His best-known plays can't be named pre-Watershed, but his more PG offerings include the sitcom Vicious and the musical adaptation of David Williams' The Boy in the Dress. Let's hear the Bristol team introduce themselves in the time-honoured fashion. I'm Lucrezia Mullerini. I graduated in 1998 after studying law at Bristol. I trained as a barrister, didn't fancy wearing a wig every day, so retrained as a broadcast journalist, and I now present at ITV News. Hi there, I'm Camilla Pang. I graduated from Bristol in 2013 in biochemistry, and I loved it so much, I did a PhD in biochemistry, and now I write about science. And this is their captain. I'm Asma Mir. I graduated a long time ago, 1993 in fact, um, in law from Bristol University, and I am now a radio presenter and journalist. I'm Mark Ravenhill. Even longer ago than 1993, 1987, I graduated uh, having studied drama and English, and since then I've been writing plays, and I'm currently co-artistic director of the King's Head Theatre. <laughs> Now, they're facing a team representing King's College, Cambridge, whose first player is a historian who's written extensively on the social, economic and political life of early modern England, Ireland and the British Atlantic. He's written monographs on John Lilburn and the English Civil Wars, and his most recent book is A Useful History of Britain. Next to him is a social scientist whose research focuses on disability and development. He's a prolific writer and broadcaster on these and other issues and co-directs the International Centre for Evidence on Disability at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Their captain is an academic who in 2011 was named a New Generation Thinker by Radio 3 and the Arts and Humanities Research Council. She's now a professor at the London College of Fashion, a widely published critic and a presenter of BBC Two's Inside Culture and Radio 3's free thinking. Their fourth member is a composer whose works include an oratorio inspired by Greta Thunberg and a setting of Malala Yousafzai's 2013 Address to the United Nations. In 2011, she co-founded the Multi-Story Orchestra, which performs in unexpected places, including the first ever BBC Proms concert in a car park. Let's meet this year's King's alumni. Hi, my name is Mike Braddock. I read history in Cambridge in the 1980s and I'm now a professor of history at the University of Sheffield. Hi, my name is Tom Shakespeare. I got a PhD in sociology at King's College in 1995, uh, went to work for the World Health Organization and ended up at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And this is their captain. 
Hello, I'm Shahid Abari. I read English at King's College Cambridge in 1999, and these days I'm a professor at the University of the Arts London and present arts programmes for the BBC. Hi, I'm Kate. I studied music. I left in 2011. Um, I'm a now musician. I play piano and I compose music and I run an orchestra that plays in car parks. OK, a very quick reminder of the rules. Ten points for starter questions. You must answer them on your own, though. There's no conferring. Bonus questions, though, the soul of them is conferring. OK, fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. Henry V, Hamlet and Richard III were from 1944 films directed by which actor who also Bristol played... Ravenhill. Laurence Olivier. Laurence Olivier is correct. <laughs> so you get the first set of bonuses, uh, Bristol, there on Christmas food, meaning tunnel in German. What cake-like bread coated in powdered sugar has an oblong shape intended to symbolise the baby Jesus in swaddling? Stollen? No, it's not. Stollen? 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 You think it's Stollen? Stolen? Stolen is correct. Which German state capital city on the River Elbe is particularly associated with the Krisch Stolen and holds an annual Stolen Festival? <laughs> no idea. Hamburg? I'm guessing. Go on, guess. Hamburg. Hamburg. I don't know. You sound like you know. Go on, go on. Do you know? <laughs> no. Hamburg. No, it's Dresden. In 1491, the Pope issued a decree allowing Dresden's bakers to use what ingredient in their stollen? Before that, the church had banned its use during the fasting period of Advent. Lard. What's even in stollen? Would it be sugar? Lard. Could you give up things for a... Sugar. Lard. Lard. Would it, would it you say lard? Sugar or a fat? Lard. Awesome. Lard. Which one do you think it is? Lard. Yeah? Yeah. Don't know. It's just a bit. Lard. No, it's much more elevated. It's butter. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, you get fire and a sweet treat. What better thing for a child in a church? These words refer to what symbolic objects that had originated in the Moravian church and are presented to children at services, usually between Advent and Candle Mass. King Shakespeare. Chris Dingle. Chris Dingle is correct. Well done. You get a set of bonuses on arguments. Officially known as promoter of the faith, what two-word English expression is used in the Roman Catholic Church for one appointed to posit arguments against a proposed beatification or canonization? No idea. Defender of the faith. Two words. Provocateur. Fides defensor. Uh, Fides, defensor. Um, Fides defensor. No, it's devil's advocate. <sighs> Born in New York in 1918, which Nobel laureate is associated with the thought experiment relating to gravitational waves and general relativity, referred to as the sticky bead argument? Richard Feynman? Yeah, Richard Feynman? Correct. The argument that it is prudent to play it safe and to believe in God's existence rather than to risk the possibility of regret is referred to as the wager of which French thinker? Pascal. Pascal. Pascal is correct. Well done. <laughs> right, ten points for this. Christmas in the Heart, Shadows in the Night and Rough and Rowdy Ways are among albums by which US performer who marked his 80th birthday in 2021? Kings Barry. Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> He's not that old. <laughs> you lose five points. Anyone want to buzz from Bristol? Bristol Mere. Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan is correct, yes. Yeah. Right, three questions on the Italian actor and singer Raffaella Cara, who died in 2021. Describing the morning for Raffaella Cara, a commentator notes one image that summed up her universal appeal, the presence of what flag next to her coffin in a Catholic church? What's important in, like, Italian culture? <laughs> I know, I know, it's very... I think. It can't be as obvious as Italian flag, flag, can it? It's not going to be the Italian flag. No, it's not, it's not obviously. Else. So just say Italian flag. Mm. Let's just do it. We don't Let's know. just say Italian flag. Italian flag. Italian flag? No, it's the rainbow flag, the LGBT oh. flag. Cara starred with Frank Sinatra in which 1965 film concerning a prisoner of war escape in Italy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Frank Sinatra pay, played in, in 
Or Audrey Hepburn time, Ro Roman Road, I don't know. Do you? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. No. Roman Road. Is... <laughs> I don't know. I don't think we know, do we? Do no. we, we make a number? Roman Road. Roman Road. Roman Road. No, it's Von Ryan's Express. In the UK, Raffaella Cara is perhaps best known for which 1978 hit single? Yes. I need the precise five-word title of its English release. So, I think... Do it, do it again. Do it, do it again with love. Do it, do it again. He had five words. But what is the five words? That was the song, <laughs> and she had a gesture like this. It's not helping. Do, do it, it again with love. love. That's good. Do it again with love. Do it again with love. No, it's do it, do it again. Oh, <laughs> so it goes. You didn't count. <laughs> right, your picture starter, you're going to see a map depicting a proposed flight plan from the airport labelled A to that labelled B for ten points. Name the city marked B. King Shakespeare. St. Petersburg. It is St. Petersburg, yes. <laughs> Taking the flight route you just saw, Captain Kreef lands in St. Petersburg with only one engine in John Finnemore's radio sitcom Cabin Pressure. Your picture bonuses will show three more flight plans from the series, taking the fictional Fitton Airport in England as point A. First, name the final destination at C and the city at B, to which Captain Kreef diverts when a smoking passenger has a heart attack after being sprayed with a fire extinguisher. Uh, Southwest, Bristol. Well, B is Reykjavik. Reykjavik and... Um... C, oh, a C. Um, um, is it Newark or is it... Boston. Boston, yeah. Boston? And the other one? Reykjavik. And Reykjavik. Correct. Well done, Mike. Secondly, identify both the proposed final destination city at C and the location at B, where Captain Kreef hires an engineer to fix the plane, only to find that the warning light has broken. <sighs> Madrid. Madrid. Johannesburg. Yeah, I think so. Madrid and Johannesburg? Correct. Yes. And finally, simply name the city at B, the closest airport to Vaduz and where the two-part Christmas finale was set in 2014. Is it Strasbourg? Oh. Strasbourg? Strasbourg? No, it's Zurich. Close. Right, ten points for this. What three-letter modal auxiliary verb appears at the beginning of words meaning the chief magistrate of a city or borough in England, a sauce consisting of egg yolk, vegetable oil and lemon juice, and an international... Ah. Kings Whitley. Hollandaise. No, you lose five points. And an international distress signal used by ships and aircraft. Ah. Bristol Ravenhill. May. May is correct, yes. As in mayor and mayonnaise and mayday and so on. Yeah. Right, so you get a set of bonuses. They're on comic verse about big cats. <laughs> <laughs> a noted read. monologue of the comedian Stanley Holloway. A boy comes to grief in the Marriott Edgar poem, The Lion and Albert, during a visit to which seaside town? There's a seaside resort called Blackpool that's noted for fresh air and fun. And Mr and Mrs Ramsbottom went there with young Albert, their son. Yeah, 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 we don't need the whole thing. <laughs> Blackpool. <laughs> Very good, well done. Blackpool. The tiger, on the other hand, is kittenish and mild. He makes a pretty playfellow for any little child. Who wrote those lines in a poem of 1896? Oh. Sounds like one of those cautionary children. Hilaire Belloc? Anyone else? I have no idea. Yeah, do that. Hilaire Belloc. Hilaire Belloc is correct. <laughs> if you're attacked by a lion, find fresh underpants to try on. Which author and comedian wrote that? He was the last surviving member of the comedy team, The Goons. Oh, I was going to say Spike Miller. Was he surviving. the last surviving? I don't Harry Seacom, Spike Miller, um, Peter Sellers. Must be Spike Milligan, was wasn't it? He was the only one who wrote comic yes, first. Yeah. Spike Milligan. Yeah. Okay. Spike Milligan? Spike Milligan is correct. <sighs> Ten points for this. Having previously been runners-up in 1949 and three times during the 1960s, which football club won the FA Cup for the first time when they beat Chelsea 1-0 in the final in 2021? Chelsea. 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 Kingsbury. Norwich. 
No. <laughs> Bristol Pang. Leicester. Leicester City is correct. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> yes! Well done. <laughs> Three questions on Chanel number five. Oh, which marked its centenary in 2021. Which Parisian square was the inspiration for the octagonal-shaped stopper of a Chanel No. 5 bottle? It is home to the Ritz Hotel and several of the world's best-known jewellery houses. I forgot what the question was. I'm sorry. The name of the octagonal square. square. Not anyone know? Plus... I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. It's to say, no, we don't know. It's Place something. Place de Concorde. Place de Concorde. That's Place Vendôme. What sweet-scented tropical oil is one of the top notes in Chanel No. 5? It's obtained from the star-shaped yellow flowers of the Kananga tree. Anise? Is that even a thing? Anise? I've heard of it. Do it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Anise? That's no, Ylang Ylang. In 2020, which French actress was named the new face of Chanel No. 5? Her portrayal of Edith Piaf in the film La Vie en Rose won her the Best Actress Oscar in 2008. Marion Cotillard? Marion Cotillard is correct. <laughs> right, we're going to take a music round. For your music starter, you're going to hear an excerpt from a choral work. For 10 points, please name the composer. Pang. Bruckner? No, you can hear a little more King's Cambridge if you wish. You may not confirm. <laughs> King's Whitley. It's definitely wrong. Bark. <laughs> no, it's not yeah, bark. It's not. So we're going to take the music bonuses. When someone gets a starter question right, it was in fact, of course, Handel. Yeah. Right, ten points for this. I need the name of the mathematician here. In number theory, the so-called Christmas theorem states that any odd prime can be written as the sum of two squares if and only if the prime is one greater than a multiple of four. It is credited to which 17th century Frenchman, famous for not providing proofs? Kingsbury. Descartes. No. Crystal Pang. Fermat. Fermat is correct, yes. <laughs> So you all failed to identify Handel's Messiah, which ended with a full chorus repeating the word Amen, seemingly ad infinitum. For your music bonuses, you'll hear three more choral works featuring repeated Amens. Five points for each composer you can correctly identify. Firstly, this English composer. It is Edward L. Gerontius. <laughs> Secondly, this French composer. Fauré? Is this Tavery? So, who did you say? Tavery. Oh, I don't even know him. Fauré or Tavery or Tavery? No, but Fauré. Oh, I don't know. I think. Tavener. Oh, no, no. No, Fauré. I'm going to say Fauré. Go on. Fauré. Yeah. Fauré, yeah. Fauré? No, that's Berlioz, it was his uh, The Childhood of Christ. And finally, this Austrian composer. I don't know. I mean, Austrian... I don't know. Pass. It's Haydn's creation. Oh, it was the best one. It was good one, huh? Ten points for this. In which city are the remnants of the first stone bridge to cross the Rhone between Lyon and the Mediterranean? The inspiration for a children's song, they form part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site that includes the Palais de Cap. Uh, Avignon. Avignon is correct, yes. <laughs> so you get a set of bonuses. 
on performers that appeared at the Glastonbury Festival of 1971, which was the first to be held at Midsummer. Entry was free of charge. In each case, name the singer or the group from the description. Firstly, a US folk singer and political activist whose albums include Diamonds and Rust. And where are you now, my son? Anyone else? I'm a bit young for 1971. Janis Joplin? No, it's Joan Baez. Oh, yes, of course. Secondly, an enduring folk rock band whose members at different times have included Richard Thompson, Simon Nicholl and Dave Pegg. Fairport Convention. Nominate Shakespeare. Fairport Convention. Correct. Which singer-songwriter finally appeared at the festival a few months before the release of his fourth studio album, Hunky Dory? David Bowie. Mm -hmm. David Bowie. David Bowie. David Bowie is correct. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. Once voted the second most recognisable female in the US after Eleanor Roosevelt, what fictional personality was created in 1921? <laughs> to answer... Bristol Ravenhill. Betty Boop. No, you lose five points. To answer questions about baking, several food products are sold under her brand, most notably cake mixes and icing. <laughs> Kings Braddock. Uh, Betty Crocker. Betty Crocker is correct. Well done. <laughs> OK, you get bonuses on a mechanical device. From a French word meaning tooth on the edge of a wheel, what term denotes a mechanism that allows a movement in one direction, for example, in a socket, spanner or turnstile? Tooth. Ratchet. Ratchet, yeah. Ratchet. Nominate Shakespeare. Ratchet. Ratchet is correct. Of uncertain etymology, what four-letter term denotes the pivoted bar, finger or latch that engages with the gear of the ratchet to prevent movement? Cog. That's a pawl. And finally, the US electrical company Thomas & Betts is generally credited with the invention of what application of a ratchet mechanism during the 1950s? It's a fastener, usually made of hard nylon. A zip? zip? Zip. No, it isn't a zip. It's a zip tie, or cable tie, or hose tie, or tie wrap. Right, we're going to take a picture around now. For your picture starter, you'll see a television chef. For ten points, please name her. Bristol Ravenhill. Fanny Craddock. That is Fanny Craddock. It is. <laughs> she began presenting her first television cooking show in 1955 for the BBC, although only her later Christmas series survives in the archive. For your picture bonuses, I want you to identify three more pioneers of television cooking. First, this US chef. Oh, is that mm -hmm. Julia? Julia? Julia Child? Oh, yes. Because oh, she's yes. quite big and yes, she looks yes, like yes. Okay. Julia Childs? Julia Childs. Julia Childs? Julia Child is correct. Secondly, this Chinese-American chef. Hey, oh, no, don't Amy Tang. She's a novelist, isn't she? Uh, Does anyone know? No. I don't know, sorry. No. 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 No? no. Uh, pass. That's Joyce Chen. Mm. And finally, who's this? Uh, that's... Madder, yes. Madder Jaffrey? <laughs> Madder Jaffrey. Yeah. Yeah. Madder Jaffrey. It is Madder Jaffrey, yes. Ten points for this. That of a figure in Greek mythology, what name is given to a wooden stand containing glass decanters that cannot be opened until a supporting wooden bar is unlocked and removed? The figure in question was punished for revealing the secret... King Shakespeare. Tantalus. Tantalus is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on Renaissance art. In the early 16th century, which artist created the murals in the four rooms known as the Stanze, part of the Vatican accommodation of Pope Julius II? Renaissance. Raphael. It's Raphael, Michelangelo. Can you repeat the date? No. <laughs> Raphael. Raphael. Raphael is correct. Yes. What name is given to Raphael's mural on the main wall of the Stanza della Segnatura? that depicts a perspective of a group of philosophers of ancient Greece. Oh, the Academy? The Academy? Oh, is it? Nominate Shakespeare. Academy? No, it's the School of Athens. Oh, yes, I knew that. Of course you knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Which figure is depicted towards the centre of the School of Athens in conversation with Aristotle and holding a copy of the dialogue Timaeus? Teaser Plato. Yeah, Plato. I think it's Plato. Plato. Plato is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. 
One of the first Nobel laureates, Henri Dunant, was the founder of which international organisation? King Shakespeare. Red Cross. The Red Cross is correct. Well done. <laughs> right, these bonuses are on English cricket in 2021. Oh. In 2021, Joe Root became England's leading run-getter across all formats when he overtook which left-handed batter who served as England captain from 2009 to 17? Atherton or someone like um, that? It's the Essex player, isn't it? Um, Which? Black hair. Uh, yeah, you know what, Atherton, within people uh, I know. Um, Somebody won Strictly, maybe. He's a farmer. Um, <laughs> Come what's on. his name? Pass. Cook. Is that a, a cricket Alistair player? Cook. Alistair, Alistair Cook. Cook. Alistair Cook is correct. Yes. Well Which done, English bowler right. overtook the record of 619 test wickets achieved by India's Anil Kumble to become the third leading wicket taker and most successful pace bowler in tests? Jimmy Anderson. Nominate Braddock. Jimmy Anderson. Correct. A new domestic competition inaugurated in 2021, the Women's Regional T20, has been named after which former England women's captain? Nominate Braddock. Rachel Hay Ho Flint. No, it's Charlotte oh. Edwards. Right, ten points for this starter question. Henri Dam and Edward Doisy shared the 1943 Nobel Prize for Medicine for their work on which vitamin? It is beneficial for blood clotting and the building of bones. King Shakespeare. K. Vitamin K is correct, yes. Right, you get a set of bonuses this time on dressmaking. After a Crimean War field marshal, what term denotes a sleeve that continues in one piece up to the neck, thus allowing easier movement? Raglan? Raglan? Raglan is correct. The name of what ecclesiastical office describes a sleeve that widens as it reaches the hem but is gathered in at the wrist? Office. Come on. Bishop? Bishop is correct. Finally, what percussion instrument designates a long sleeve flared at the lower edge? <laughs> that, of course, is a bell. <laughs> of course, you knew. You did very, very well. You won. Congratulations. Bristol, 95. It's not a bad score. It was a good game, much closer than the final scoreline suggested, I think. It suggests that there was more of a walkover than there was, in fact. <laughs> I hope you can join us next time for another of the heats. But until then, it's goodbye from Bristol University. Bye. Goodbye. It's goodbye from King's College, Cambridge. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.